Hello traders, this is Blake Morrow and you are listening to the week ahead video for April 4th, 2021. I hope you guys and gals are enjoying a great Easter weekend. Um, I know if you're in the United States, you're probably celebrating Easter Sunday or you just have with your family. For those of you in Europe, um, you know, most of you celebrate Easter Monday. So it's going to be a shortened week uh, for the next week, you know, for liquidity. But that doesn't mean that we won't have any activity. And that actually, we've got a lot of a lot of data coming out uh, next week that we knew we do need to pay attention to. But before I get into that, I just want to say, if you haven't tried out Forex Analytics, make sure you do so. It's only $1 for 10 days. $1 for 10 days. Make sure you download the mobile app because you can get our analysis and the chat room and you know all the bells and whistles with all the uh, alerts and, and, and push notifications right to your phone. So it doesn't matter if you have a you know, Android or uh, Apple phone, make sure you download either one of them. Also, it doesn't matter if you're gonna use the light version and um, you just wanna have access to all the webinars that we do, or if you're using the premium version at $120 a month and you want access to the chat rooms, you and the advanced analysis, sorry, I almost forgot that, um, you still get to, to use the premium version in your 10 day trial. So make sure you get out and take a test drive of Forex Analytics. Okay, now let's get into, uh, let's get into what's going on next week. Oh, you know what? I also have to mention, if, if, if you guys are watching us via YouTube, please, please, please comment on the YouTube channel you can say, Blake, I think you're the best. Or, you know, you might say, Blake, I just totally don't agree with what you're saying regarding the dollar or whatever. Um, but the more comments you make, the better off uh, it, it is for us, for our YouTube algorithms. Also, give us a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. You know, it, this is Saturday before Easter Sunday. I'm actually about ready to go clean my house uh, because we got some family coming over. Just have to wrap that up, uh, you know, the, the finishing touches, if you will. Uh, but I'm stopping to make this video for you. And then the guys and gals that are editing this, they're gonna be doing it on Easter Sunday. So give us a thumbs up. Tell us that you like us. You know, uh, share this on, on Twitter and on LinkedIn and every place that you see us. We really appreciate it. And I tell you, for me, I really, it makes me feel good when you, when I know you guys, you know, like what we do and, and making these videos for you every week, even on a holiday weekend. All right. Um, I, I want to point out, um, as we go into this next week, uh, there, you, you know, currencies are moving or uh, currencies, I'm sorry, cryptocurrencies are moving. Uh, you can see that Ethereum's above 2000 Bitcoin's lagging. And, and I'm going to talk about that just for a second, because I, I wrote some analysis with Forex Analytics, and you can you can read it in the basic technical analysis. Just a little update uh, this morning um, with Ethereum breaking the 2000 level. Uh, it's been surprising not to see Bitcoin break above the 60,000 level, which will not bode well for bulls near term. And, um, you know, I wrote that earlier uh, today, and you can see Ethereum has been backing off. And, and I don't know where it's going to open or where it's going to be at by the time you guys read this. Because like I said, I'm filming on a, on a Saturday, but Ethereum started to pull back and then Bitcoin really started to pull back. So uh, that's something to just pay attention to that, you know, some of these altcoins are going up and Bitcoin's kind of stalled. And that typically hasn't been the case. And uh, I, I'm still monitoring Bitcoin from a risk uh, asset, you know, a, a, and, and I'll say this again, and if you haven't seen my previous videos or, you know, listened to our analysis, our face webinar throughout the course of the week that is free. By the way, the link to access our free webinars every morning, every morning at 9 a.m. Eastern. You just click the link below in the description of this video and that'll get you to Zoom and you can, um, you know, uh, uh, register for our, our, our free webinars. Um, one of the things that I, I've said on our webinars is you've got to watch Bitcoin because it is the riskiest asset out there. Now, I'm not here to debate you to tell you that Bitcoin's risky as an investment. That's not that's not the point of what I'm saying. The point of what I'm saying is Bitcoin is viewed as one of the riskier growth investments. So or the riskiest. So if you think that 
you know, our economy is powering forward and, 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 uh, you know, uh, you know, we're going, you know, stocks and everything else is going straight up. Well, Bitcoin should be the leader because it's an unknown for the most part for most people. So, you know, if they're, if, if everybody's feeling good about the economy and they see rainbows and unicorns and, you know, and, 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 um, strawberry shortcake is, you know, is in their eyes. (laughs) I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, Bitcoin will go higher. But if you start to see Bitcoin falter, that suggests to me that the riskier assets might be at risk. And so I'm watching Bitcoin very carefully at the 50 day moving average, which you can see is this orange trend line. It's also the channel support. So uh, that that right now is going to come in around, let's just say roughly about 53, 54,000. Um, I'm, I'm really going to be concerned below 50,000. Uh, that's where that's kind of like you know, I, I like to call it a bull bear. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, a bull bear line in the sand. Uh, when when you hear me say that, or the rest of our rest of our team at Forex Analytics say, um, you know, it's a it's a it's a bull bear line. Here's a six one eight right there. Uh, you can see it here. Um, you know, different different assets will have like a bull bear line. You can see like in the S and P five hundred. That means while you're above uh, a certain level, you're you're bullish. While you're Below, when you get below that level, it becomes bearish. My bull bear line for Bitcoin is at 50,000 because that is a 618 retracement of the last major move higher. And that's you know where we stopped on our last big dip. And so it, it, I know it's below channel support. I know it's below the 50 day moving average, but that's where I really draw the line. You know, We get below 50,000 and then I get really worried about what's ha- gonna happen in other asset classes. All right, so I just wanted to make sure that I I, um, I, I, you know, mentioned that to you guys. All right, so um, let's talk about, we had a great jobs report, (laughs) blowout. Now, if you didn't see the live analysis of the the jobs report, um, you can actually go back and listen to our YouTube video. We, We published that on the FACE webinar. It was Good Friday and most people were off. I still ended up getting up early in the morning at you know three o'clock in the morning to, to do the analysis for you guys. Um, and we were expecting a strong jobs report and we got it. And the dollar is strengthening. And uh, at first the stocks, the stock, what well, I say the stocks, the stock market actually pulled back a little bit and then we rallied into the close uh, once futures, um, once uh, before futures actually closed for the day. But um, uh, one of the, the things that I, I, I noted about the dollar is the dollar is going to continue to rally. And now that's going to, you, you got to watch it because the stock market held up well. And I, I think it held up well because uh, Archegos uh, continues to get squeezed. Matter of fact, um, they, they've lost $110 billion in five days using 500% leverage that's via the financial times crazy right well i think one of the reasons why the stock market continues to squeeze higher and it it, it squeezed higher um on friday just as we uh as as the market closed previous uh friday uh the 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 market squeezed higher here as well Uh, it's because short positions being unwound from archegos that is my assumption and plus people just don't want to be short over a long weekend. And I think that that really created a lot of, um, it's it's creating a little havoc in the equity markets. Now, uh, the dollar continues to strengthen and we have, I just want to point this out. This is a bull flag pattern. And, you know, while we're above this 200 day moving average, which is the red moving average, you can see it right here. And that comes right in and right around the breakout point, which is 92.50. There is no reason for me at this point in time or any of us to be bearish the dollar while below that. But I'm gonna point something out about the dollar index that is a risk for bulls, okay? It is that you see this um, magenta or pink, yeah, you call it whatever you wanna call it. See that trend line right there, okay? Let me, let me pull you out to a week, weekly chart. And by the way, this analysis is also, uh, you'll find it on the basic technical analysis on Forex analytics. Um, but 
our analysis was being uploaded by our team members over the weekend. Uh, I know Steve Volgaris is he, he's he's uh, he's been busy uh, pushing some analysis over the weekend, um, and then you'll get some Asian analysis uh, Sunday night from from uh, Paul Franco and and others. But I, that's why I'm not using. Uh, Forex analytics, and that's why I don't use it on the weekends when I'm doing these videos for you because everything's still being uploaded. And by the way, you can follow along live if you want, um, you know, j with the live charts here um, in that are embedded in the Forex analytics if you if you like. Uh, but I, I'm I'm using this template because I have everything saved here for our team. Anyway, going back to the dollar index, see this weekly trend line? Um, we are attacking right now, installed at this last week the underside of that trend line. So of course we're gonna find some resistance there. And if you've listened to the week ahead videos for the last two weeks, we've noted that. So that is a risk for bulls. Now what's a risk for bears is if we actually break above, you know, the, we, we can call it right now 93.50. We break above that and I, I wouldn't wanna be short the dollar. I just wouldn't. Um, because you know this would be a bull flag pattern then that bull flag pattern that you see there okay will complete where it should around the 9450 level right so we have two bull a bull flag and a bull flag pattern all right so technically the dollar still looks bullish and while we're above 9250 that's kind of where you it's that bull bear line that I was just talking about um, you know next week we do have we even though it's like Easter Monday uh, so so there's not going to be I mean I think liquidity is going to be pretty poor even though US equity markets will be open still like bank liquidity is going to be kind of poor um, on on Tuesday morning which is Monday night we're, we're going to have the RBA meet now we're not expecting fireworks from the RBA but uh, they, you know, we got we got to watch what they they say, obviously. And I think the Aussie dollar, and and you guys have heard me say this for those of you that are you know are avid listeners of our face webinar, if you you listen to the week ahead videos um, that that we that we do every week, I've been pointing out for the last several weeks that the Aussie dollar has really failed to um, to follow risk higher. You know, as stocks go higher, we've been building out this uh, head and shoulder pattern, and guess what? this week would make it pretty symmetrical like um you know the, the the right shoulder it would make it pretty symmetrical if we broke down this next week so in other words uh if the aussie dollar turns lower and we stay below let's say like roughly 78 cents and we break below the 76.50 or 75.50 level i'm sorry um then you know that would be a very symmetrical head and shoulder pattern that we'd have to watch now personally i'm looking to buy the aussie dollar on a dip and i would be really kind of uh very very excited or um very interested in looking at the aussie for longs as we approach channel support or the 200 day moving average now for those of you that follow technical patterns like i do a head and shoulder pattern it just doesn't complete um, all that often. They really don't. But they get people excited, and in this case, you know, you, you might people you might get people targeting. Let's just say roughly, because your target would be something like that, right? Head to neck, neck extended. So the target would be closer to seventy one cents. 200 day moving average comes in around 73, 73, you know, 50, 73, 80, somewhere around there, 74 cents. So I could very easily see the market get very bearish below a break below like 75.50, but buyers swoop in around the 618 retracement here. You can see it right there. Around the 73, 75 level. So somewhere in this neighborhood i'm going to be looking for a bounce and you know ultimately the aussie dollar may continue lower depending on what's happening with you know risk appetite in the markets um what's happening with um you know yields and you know with 
with uh, with bond yields, uh, which you know obviously we're monitoring the ten year yield right now that has just been you know really strong. And one of the things the RBAs had a hard time coping with is their um, their yields as well. They they haven't. Uh, the, the, and and so that might pose another issue to Aussie dollar longs. And so that's why the RBA rate decision on Monday night, if you're in the US, um, or it's Tuesday morning, if you're in Australia or you know in the middle of the night in Europe, you gotta pay attention to what the RBA is saying. Uh, and I think it's gonna be worth, um, worth watching carefully. Okay, a uh, couple other currencies I really want to focus on. I'm, I'm sorry I'm going to keep this video relatively short uh, as we head into the Easter weekend. Matter of fact, like I said, I need to go finish up uh, tidying up around the house, uh, help out a little bit. I'm watching the uh, dollar Canadian really carefully. Um, we do have Canadian jobs report at the end of the week, right? We do have the Canadian jobs report at the end of the week. And before I get into that, and, what, and how I feel here, let me remind you, if you haven't given us a thumbs up and you haven't liked this video, you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do it, pretty please. And then also comment down there if you can. Tell me how you feel about the Euro. I'll respond to you. I'm gonna try. All right, now the dollar Canadian, descending wedge. We've come out of it, We've, we're respecting the wedge support and you can see even on um on on friday uh we came down held that support i wouldn't be surprised if the dollar canadian slumps down to 124.50 and we carve out our own inverted head and shoulder pattern here in the dollar canadian now is that going to happen uh i don't know uh but I would be very interested in seeing how we react down here at 2450, okay? But what I am watching, just like the 50-day moving average in, um, you know, the, 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 uh, the uh, in Bitcoin, uh, I'm, I'm actually watching the 50-day moving average here, which is actually capping the US dollar Canadian as well. And, you know, I, I wasn't really looking at it at the Euro, and I'll, I'll, I'll briefly mention the Euro here in a second. But I would be interested to see, you know, how we react down here at 124.50. And obviously, if we break out above 126.50, then, in my opinion, the dollar Canadian's ready to make its move back up towards that 129.50, 130 uh, area that I've been thinking that we're going to go to over the last couple of weeks. So uh, even though we're about in the middle of this, uh, the, these uh, breakout points, Again, 126.50, 124.50. Let's see how the dollar Canadian reacts at those levels, especially um, with crude oils, you know, hovering around the $60 mark. But let's see if uh, crude starts to show some weakness uh, after this very, very long run that we've seen. Last uh, currency pair I'm, I am going to talk about today. We and by the way, this next week we have a lot of European uh, PMIs coming out on Wednesday and uh, I believe on Thursday. No, on Thursday we have uh, producer prices and some unemployment in, in the Eurozone, but we have uh, actually producer prices, or I'm sorry, PMIs uh, coming out uh, on Wednesday morning. Uh, Tuesday morning in Europe, we have some unemployment uh, data coming out of uh, Spain and Italy um, and unemployment rate out of the Eurozone. So, you know, we are getting some economic data. And as I've told you guys over the last couple of months, economic data is starting to matter. Why is economic data starting to matter? Because when all central banks are as low, we're basically zero bound on, with most central banks. People are now starting to figure, tr tr trying to figure out when each central bank is gonna start talking about tapering bond purchases, possibly raising rates, not, you know, not anytime in the near future. But if those expectations shift a little bit, that's what causes and will create movement in currencies. And so that's why economic data is really mattering. And as I've told you guys for the last several months, economic data matters. It hasn't mattered in a long time because we've had massive central bank in intervention globally because of COVID. And every central bank has brought rates down as low as they could possibly go for their own respective central bank. So now that we're starting to see economic data pick up, 
and we're starting to see you know that maybe we're getting past the covid uh era uh you know with with in in in, in our economy and all economies are going to rebound everybody's going to start talking about central banks and how you know they're going to try to normalize and so that's why it's very important that we watch this economic data data as it's being released okay let's talk about the euro and and for those of you that have been following along uh, with me you know that i'm i'm still targeting the euro down around 116 that's where the bear flag pattern happens or completes uh, I, i'd love to see a move below the 116 level and to be a buyer down between 116 to 115 that's where you can see this little shaded area that's ultimately what i'd like to see but that doesn't mean we're going to get there and that doesn't mean we're going to go straight there but i am bearish while we're below this 11850 level so you can see we're we're challenging this downtrend line and it's it's holding right now we got a little oversold uh towards the uh middle of last week and i really wouldn't be surprised to see the euro make a push towards 11850 before rolling back over to uh to complete this this flag pattern and I'll, get, I'll, I'll tell you what, we get above this 200 day moving average, which comes in right around the 1865, 1870 level. We get above this 200 day moving average, and then I would, I would venture to guess the near term bottom is in. That means we've held all this uh, horizontal support and the euro is heading higher. But we've got a lot of work to do in order for that to happen. Uh, so guys and gals, I, I want to say thanks again for tuning in, listening. If you've made it this far in the video, that means you like me you really really like me i'm joking but uh, no I, I i really appreciate you making it this far uh, so please give us a thumbs up like this video subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our great uh, content that we put out throughout the course of the week we put out so many videos and the interviews that dale pinker does with you know all these different traders and and, and economists globally um, we bring it to you for free and hopefully you get a lot out of it. So uh, make sure you subscribe. All right. My name is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. I hope you have a wonderful Easter weekend and, uh, and an Easter holiday. If you don't celebrate, just you know, time off. Have a great one. Thanks for listening in. Bye-bye.